Well, the divided Congress is likely to drive some big headlines in the new year. It's coming off a year of political upheaval from, of course, the reversal of Roe v. Wade to the January 6th committee hearings to the countrywide midterm elections that we have not forgotten yet. Joining us now with what to watch in politics in the year ahead is Hank Scheinkoff, president of Scheinkoff Communications and a political consultant who has helped run more than 700 political campaigns, many of them for Democratic candidates, I'll point out. And then also Rena Shaw, CEO of Relax Strategies, a GOP strategist who has served on two Republican congressional staffs. Hank, Rena, as always, thank you both for being here. Welcome back to a morning rush. Appreciate your time. Hank, we'll start with you. Uh, President Biden going to be dealing with a defiant House of Representatives, to say the, le the least, for the next two years. What are Democrats going to need to do to get legislation passed this year? And do we see this as a realistic thing, uh, getting their policy goals through? Well, the Democrats are going to have to pray a lot. I mean, the Republicans uh, have had problems holding on to speakers, and that's going to determine a lot of what occurs here. Why? Because uh, this speaker is not going to have an easy time of it within his own caucus, which will make it entirely impossible in many cases for Democrats or anybody to pass any legislation that is any bipartisan little to it whatsoever. And so, Rena, the January 6th committee's investigation into the insurrection quickly became a charge topic in Congress. How will the January 6th committee's final report that we got very recently, influence the next session of Congress, and then in turn, what will Republicans begin investigating in the upcoming season? Well, I'm not a big fan of the new year, new me talk, but, you know, really Democrats stand to gain here. If last year was their year of building, this year could be their year of growth. I can't say the same thing for the Republicans because they've shown us nothing. Though they'll be taking control starting tomorrow, there is really no indication of what exactly this Republican caucus in the House wants. Uh, of course, as Hank mentioned, the Speaker McCarthy uh, to be uh, is a guy that even right now sits really embroiled in in truly uh, a moment where his own people don't seem to want him. Yesterday, yesterday there were nine holdouts that sent him a le letter saying, these are the concessions we still want from you. So how does he govern? Uh, that is, it's going to look near impossible because it's looking like he is uh, going to allow something called the vote of no confidence to go to the floor. And so that means essentially uh, any member who doesn't have a vote, uh, who doesn't have confidence in his leadership can vote to have him out. This is just something we have not seen in a really long time and frankly it doesn't bode well for the party because that means that there's distractions galore and again it makes the democrats look better it makes them look like the adults in the room and it makes them look like they got something done so about the january 6th select committee it's going to be something in the past they've got the report done i don't know that it's going to have a real impact on this congress moving forward because what i expect to see is a whole lot of theatrics starting tomorrow Mm. And now let's look ahead a little bit. Hank, it's still early, of course, to talk about 2024 presidential election, but it is unofficially the start of that uh, campaign season. So Democrats are unsure about President Biden being on the ballot again. Republicans seem to be drifting further away from Donald Trump. So there's a lot of questions still. Uh, let's take a quick listen to what Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson had to say. Well, I'm going to do everything that we can to make sure there's alternatives that he is not the nominee. And, of course, that uh, all depends upon who else is out there. But I do not believe that Donald Trump should be uh, the next president of the United States. Uh, I think he's had uh, his opportunity there. I think January 6th uh, really disqualifies him for the future. And so we move beyond that. And uh, that's what I'm going to be focused on. So, Hank, are we going to see a Biden-Trump rematch? Uh, and if not, who do you think it will be? Hard to see a Biden-Trump rematch. Hard and easy to see the having a problem on who to pick to run as the should the president. And that's that. But Biden versus Trump. Trump has uh, had the worst rollout after he announced for president any press, any potential candidate we can think of in quite some time. I... Caveat, of course. If there's real finance, if the system starts to break down again, there's always room for a populist that Donald Trump may, in fact, raise his head again. All right, Rena, I'm curious to get your thoughts on that as well. 
Well, you know, let's not forget, this year is all about setting the political table for next year. And I don't love that either. This is just stuff that's part and parcel with our system. We have a whole year in which we're going to see members of Congress, whether it's on the Senate side or on the House side, really try to audition for uh, roles in a future cabinet. Uh, obviously, Republicans are feeling pretty good about their chances, but they're still very much the MAGA movement that controls the party in some ways. Though the midterms did tell us that it's the maybe Trumpers in the Republican Party today who have the power. Those maybe Trumpers I talk about are people that are looking at Governor uh, Ron DeSantis of Florida, who are looking at uh, Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina, who are interested in perhaps a Governor Asa Hutchinson himself. I mean, these are all people who are mulling bids for the White House, but Trump remains very much the standard bearer. So how to really knock him out? I think it's external forces that are going to do him in, essentially. I don't. I think he's announced this bid, but I don't think he'll see it through. We're sitting in a moment where Congress has a lot of power to do good for the American public and really start to reverse their impression of a do-nothing Congress, which has had for years upon years. We know the disapproval rating for Congress continues to go up and up. Barely any American really cares about who's representing them anymore because they see the partisanship on di display. But again, this being such a banner year in many ways that will lead us into the next year, we know certain things are also going to happen outside of Congress that are going to have an impact on the American political system as well. And that's stuff uh, like what's going to be happening in the Supreme Court. There are going to be rulings that have serious implications, the political arena as well. So lots going on. And also, let's quickly talk about the Supreme Court, which will, it's, we're heading into another influential year for the court. So with issues like Title 42, student loan forgiveness, uh, race and college admissions on the docket, in your opinion, which Supreme Court case will have the most political impact this year? Look, we go for back me, to the problems. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Hank. <laughs> Sorry, that was for Rena, but I, I am curious for both of your traditional problems of states' rights versus the court versus central government. You're going to see, uh, you're going to see a mess. Please, please continue, Hank. Sorry, for, I know the delay makes it a little difficult, but you can finish. <laughs> the Supreme Court, the Trump nominees there. It'll be more conservative court. Uh, women seeking to get back. An issue, it's not going like this. I think you'll see. All right, so we're having a little trouble hearing Hank uh, on top of that delay. So, Rena, let's get let's quickly get your answer on that one. Well, well you know. Democracy. <laughs> The Democrats were really successful in passing key parts of their agenda last year. And essentially, you know, they told us what's important to them. Republicans have not been so great at that. But the one big thing that Republicans have told us that they care about is the southern border. They've been very critical of Vice President Kamala Harris for her actions, for President Biden himself and his actions on people who are coming to, again, seek asylum at our southern border. Uh, just the very fact of immigration, I think, is going to be a really dominating uh, conversation. And it's going to be held by Republicans. It's going to be led by Republicans. But what that really means is they're going to go to this Title 42 uh, talk that happened at, at the Supreme Court. And and they're really not going to talk about what Trump did or didn't do in his era. He didn't build the wall as he so famously campaigned and said he would do. But what they'll try to do is really make uh, serious dings on our system, whether in the states or their governors. But essentially in Congress, they're going to really try to stick it to Democrats and say, you want a country of basically people who don't come here legally and follow the letter of the law. We are a country of laws, and this is why we look better. So that's on the Supreme Court end, and, and really immigration, I think, will be dominating. But I think the economy and, of course, our aid to Ukraine and support of uh, Ukraine in light of the now coming up on one year, uh, the invasion of Russia into Ukraine, I think that's also going to be very, very dominant. And you're going to hear a lot of far right-wingers in Congress take that conversation and not let up. Mm. All right, Hank Scheinkopf, president of Scheinkopf Communications, and Rena Shaw, CEO of Relax Strategies. Thank you both, as always, for your time. Really appreciate it, and Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year. Thank you.